Hi there, everybody. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about pen and ink drawing and faces. So I've been working on this little book and I thought I'd um, give you a flip through and then I'm going to do a drawing on the back side of this and we'll see how that turns out. One never knows, at least for me. So um, you know how much I love concertinas and I was looking online about the one page books that you can make. So that's what this is. And it just, um, you know, it's cut out of one page, but it doesn't turn into a concertina. It folds, let's see if I can get it folded back right again, there we go. So it folds into a regular book, and this is what we've got here. So I'm, as you know, always interested in abstracting things um, and catching the mystery in things, and I think um, value contrasts really work with that. So what I do when I do these, I just go on to Unsplash, which is a source online for non-copyrighted images, and I find interesting faces there, and then I draw them in a way that um, distortion happens. Like this guy's face is all smooshed, and <clears throat> this guy's head's cut off. You know, different things happen. This guy got extended even more, and I'm not interested in catching a likeness or anything like that. I just use the reference material as a taking off point. So I saved here on my iPad a, uh, another face that looked interesting to me, and there it is. So that's going to be my, um, my reference photo for some reason in this book I used all men. I usually draw women, but that makes it interesting to me. I've got here a fountain pen. Um, you know, nothing special about it. It's just an inexpensive fountain pen because I thought it was interesting. And what I'm going to do is start out, I start out with something that creates um, a little bit less control. So I'm going to do a... Um, See, I think I want his face. I'm just thinking about just sort of where it's going to end up. And I'm going to do a continuous line drawing, and I'm going to do a modified blind contour drawing at the same time. So I am looking at my reference material about 90% of the time and looking at... Um, the photo. <laughs> uh, about 10% of the time. Sorry, this is pretty tough to do. And I'm not picking my pen up. So this is coming up here. Let's see. And the reason I like to do drawings like this is because we think we know what faces look like. We think we know what everything looks like. We have this image in our minds and okay so I'm going to pick this pen back up this actually that's sort of whoops lost and lost in the dark there uh, we think we know what things look like and so modified contour drawings require us to look a whole lot at what we're drawing without um, without preconceptions, because we can't look at our paper very much. So I'm, I'm looking now to just replace my pen. And I'm gonna come this way, let's see. And this is just the start. Okay, I'm gonna come back in and do, um, then put the details in that way. That's a creepy looking eye, wow. So like I said, I never know. The drawings that I just showed you in this book, some of them I really like and some of them I do not like at all. Um, and it doesn't matter that much because it's just about the process. I really enjoy the process of um, drawing in a way that removes my control. And in abstracting, things that interest me, and I find the human face to be extremely interesting. So what I'm going to do now, okay, so clearly no, not much likeness there, right? I'm going to call this, you know, this is my the basic format. I've got all the elements here uh, pretty much done. So now I'm going to, I'm going to keep my reference photo, and I'm going to um, keep drawing on this, but I'm going to do more looking. All right, so I've got something that's already distorted here. Let's see what I can do with it.
All right, now I'm going to start looking a lot more at the structure. Now there are, there's a bit of shadow under his nose. Goes all the way around his nostril. Oh, my pen's running out of ink. I was afraid of that. Try not to get too bogged down in detail. So that right there describes his nose pretty well without worrying too much. I've got this wonky line right here. I think I might try and do a little bit of something with that. That helped. Actually, there is a shadow. If I would have looked at my source photo. And if you make your shading lines go in the same direction as the contours of what you're drawing. That helps quite a bit too. The drawings always look more natural and more interesting when, um, you know, so many of these things, they're not really lines. A line, it's an edge of a shadow more than a line, or it's an edge of a shape. can see probably by the way that you space your lines um, helps a great deal with the value. That's how you create value. Lines closer together appear darker. Um, you'll see, okay, the highlight of his forehead is right here. So, All right, this is a pit pen, 
um, from Faber-Castell. It's a big brush, and I love this thing. It's just fantastic for getting nice dark darks. And there are quite a few here, and I think that I can add more. <laughs> my dog. It's always the really strong darks that appeal to me. And this goes a heck of a lot faster than trying to get a fountain pen to um, cover large areas. And his hair is all pretty dark, except for a few highlights in here. tiny highlights along the edge of his beard and then this is quite dark. I've got the angle of his face wrong but let's see. It's like almost completely black this way. I usually do when I get to a spot like that as I slide a piece of paper under and I'm not drawing on what's behind there. So I'm going to exaggerate how dark this is. Another way to make figures really pop out from their background is to have the background behind an area that's light on the figure to be very dark. Let's see. Uh, I think there's something in this eyelid needs a little something. It's too light. That is not the lightest part. This is really the lightest part of his face. So let's have a little bit of contour lines there. And this also more rounded than the lid. Eye is actually, we always think of the whites of our eyes as being very light, but they're actually a good portion of that part of our eyes in shadow. So I'm kind of trying to Move those distortions into something somewhat readable. And I think, I think I've got him. I'll have to look at it again later, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, so I showed you all these pages. Did I show you the center? There's the centerpiece. And I was thinking with this design, it's entirely possible. There we go, let me zoom out just a little bit for you. There we go. It's entirely possible, and I had thought about it, but I just haven't had the inspiration to also draw on these center parts. I could take this side of this guy's face and turn it into something a little bit different over here, and the same thing over here. But he's so distinctive and in such a um, distinctive posture that I'm not sure 
what what would be gained by that it needs to be something different enough to make it worthwhile to open it to me this is just my thought process so i'm not sure that i'm going to do that at this point i think that got my little book here i gotta put somebody on the front i suppose there he is on the back yeah, he's got sort of a funny smirk on his face. He's an interesting character. I'm happy with that. How about this, though? That's too bright for his neck. Let's see. And his neck would go this way. So let's put contour lines in the direction of his neck. There. This also, see, now I'm, now I'm leaning towards things that I know rather than what I see. But I... Just know that that is not the brightest part of his face right there. And it's also not what I want to bring attention to. The things, you know, noses, eyes, a little bit of the mouth are what really make portraits distinguished, uh, you know, interesting, I think. And so, there. So um, that's where my focus is. And yeah, I'm happy with that. All right. Thanks for coming along for the ride.